we just got over the UHF that Mark rolled his car on the back upside down I don't know how shit together. Six o'clock, Thursday morning. I'm on my way to Pheasant's Nest. On the opposite side you pretty much see all the traffic there, Sydney inbound traffic. How would I hate to stuck into that every morning? And that's at six, so at seven obviously that's nearly crawling all here. Anyway, I'm off to better places, Victorian high country. I caught up with Mark at uh, the Edmondson CV uh, rest stop. Yeah, we had a look at uh, Kenton's Rocks. Uh, beautiful beach, very secluded. However, uh, no direct beach access, so you have to walk down a fair bit. Fairly steep hill. And the camp spot, there is a camp spot for probably two cars max, would be very close. But also no good views, so we decided to head back out and have a look at two other camp spots around here. We managed to find a secluded little camp spot close to Fennell's Landing and right next to the Tambu Inlet. So we had beautiful water views and uh, quite some big fish jump out of the water there. The drone footage beautifully shows, um, yeah, a bird's eye view over that whole inlet, the coast and the inland. Absolutely stunning. I loved it. Nice morning. Coffee. Important. Mark still having a snooze. I think it is only six o'clock though. After a night of rain, a good coffee in the morning and the brekkie, we made our way towards Slicola. Yeah, here at uh, the Licola campground. Um, just arrived, waiting for Rob. Oh, actually, don't wait for Rob right here. We just purchased a hot shower um, behind us here. Beautiful campground, actually, uh, right next to McAllister River. So, how are you camping? So, I'm sleeping. I use the Oz tent jet bunker which is uh, pretty sturdy, very comfortable and um, allows you to, to change it all to get different air in and what have you. I've got the same mattress as you. Yeah, I stole the, that idea from you, you stole actually. This one from me. <laughs> the Thermarest, yeah. Thermarest, which is worth its weight in gold. It's more comfortable than the bed at home. Yes. Don't tell the wife that. <laughs> Foxwing awning gives me 270 degrees. Still. Bushman fridge. I set this at, uh, as a freezer. Yeah. And I always take an esky because I like my my beers cold, not frozen. Yeah. And I just I swap around, so I use this as a fridge and that as a freezer. That is a good idea. Did you build your little? Yep. This I built myself. So I mean, you can YouTube uh, various forums have got. Uh, you, you built the whole lot even with the slider and so on? Yeah, I bought the yeah. slider, so the slider yeah. was from ORS. Same but as my one. 
you have uh, finally succumbed to mud tires. Yes. To some BFG KM2s. I had to buy some 17 inch rims. Yeah. Uh, this is the, the 2.7 litre D4, so I can fit 17 inch rims on this and some decent mud tires. But that's pretty much all. You have a raised air intake. Yes. And a roof rack, and that's where it ends, oh? Good morning, Saturday morning, 8.30. We camped at the uh, Korowong uh, campground. Yeah, got in. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Oh. Caitlin, good morning. It's the operator. Hmm. Narrowed it down the front bearing. Bearing? Yeah. Just met up with Rob in the morning, just to find out that his alternator packed it in last night. So that uh, starts to seize up, because it also runs a water pump. Darren from the Licola store helped us out, made a couple of calls, and Robert is now on the way to sail to get a new alternator put in. And uh, then we meet him back up at Licola at around 4 o'clock. And Mark and myself now uh, doing a bit of a loop track here, which uh, Darren recommended. Mark, how do you like uh, the track so far? Axel Breaker Hill and so on. Hi, Mum. Uh, it's been interesting. The local in Licola told me that it's called Axel Breaker Hill because people sit there and that wombat holds and. Uh, Break the axles and CVs, however, uh, driven considerably, not too much difficulty, huh? Yeah, it was a little bit loose in some spots and a couple of uh, chopped up bits, but yeah, drive it slowly, it's fine. Yeah, we just did Axel Hill and uh, the Bourgogne, 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 sounds French, uh, track. Yeah, pretty nice. I uh, like how the cruiser behaves. Um, yeah, some interesting little sections, I mean, nothing crazy, but, uh, you know, if you take Billy Go Bluff or something as a benchmark, certainly uh, more interesting than that. Such a pity, people always need to leave bloody rubbish. So we're going to pick that up. Fairly fast flowing and reasonably deep. The second crossing here was at a campground, I'm not sure. I never let a chance for a good swim uh, pass. I decided to head for a little dip in the freezing cold McAllister River. A group of three vehicles, including a little Suzuki, decided to ford the water. We already made the decision not to ford it as we had to be back at 4 o'clock and the river really was a little bit too deep to ford without a risk, especially for the Discovery 4 with all the electronics in the vehicle. <laughs> so now the patrol is pulling the Suzuki. If you watch uh, Suzuki in the rear, you can see here that it had actually a good chance of being swept down the river if it wasn't for the strap. <laughs> for us, there was no real urgency to cross the river, 
So we turned around and headed back towards Likola to catch up with Rob and Caitlin and find a campsite for the night. What do you reckon, Mark? Terrible. The worst campsite I've ever been to. Is it? Yeah, it was your choice. Yes, I know. Terrible. Sorry for that views. That's your failed alternator. Yeah. Well, it didn't fail, it was still going. I just didn't want to risk it going up the mountains and then have it fail halfway through the trip. Sunday morning and uh, it's around seven o'clock sun uh, is up for a little while I'm up for an hour now and uh, sent the drone up took a couple of beautiful pictures and what a magnificent camp campground that is absolutely beautiful I mean as you can see that mountains in the background there are absolutely stunning especially when the Sun sets on it or now when the Sun is just about to appear behind the mountains. We'll see what we do today. I think we're actually heading into that mountains. It pretty much um, goes alongside the Avon wilderness and uh, sometimes we dip into the wilderness. We'll see how that tracks go. After Brecky, Rob and Caitlin aired down and we started our day uh, where we were planning to drive uh, the Mount Margaret track. We started from Hickey's Creek and then turned uh, left onto Mount Margaret and pretty much uh, followed Mount Margaret uh, up to the end uh, where it comes out again at uh, Korong Campground. The trek itself, uh, nothing too challenging. It had a couple of loose sections uh, where we had to search a little bit for traction. But yeah, pretty easy drive, uh, the whole drive actually. After a quick lunch stop on top of Mount Margaret, we made our way back down to the river to go for a swim as it was pretty hot that day. After enjoying the pretty fresh water of the Wellington River, we made our way uh, northwest of Likola to find a camp spot for the night. Scenic route from, from Likola to Jameson, the green rolling hills around there, especially in the afternoon, are absolutely stunning. We decided to have a look on top of Mount Selma. I thought this was the only trek to the summit really and uh, yeah, forged ahead. Shortly after me, Rob was coming up and it was actually a little bit of a rough patch of trek there. This used to be actually the only trek up Mount Selma. However, during the wildfires in 2006-2007, uh, there were some big fire breaks created and an alternative track up to Mount Selma was done and that's the one Mark took. So I thought we're going to come to that pristine camping spot and then I arrive at the top and Mark... Uh, I'm already here. <laughs> already here. As it was late in the afternoon by then and uh, we wanted to camp on top of one of the hills anyway we looked around Mount Selma and found a little camp spot a bit away from the main trek and decided to stay there for the night to enjoy the sunset and sunrise. We were surrounded by burnt uh, mountain ash um, forest and the views are just spectacular. Um, the mountain ash burns you on the fire but still germinates in and uh, you see all the regrows coming through. The mountain ash, it's actually the world's tallest uh, flowering tree. We pretty much collected a full bag of rubbish uh, which we carried out from up here. It is beyond me how people can go through the effort to go to these remote beautiful places and then leave all their rubbish around there.
after a beautiful sunrise at Mount Selma, we made our way back down and headed towards Aberfeldy. We had a couple of uh, shallow river crossings, but uh, nothing really too uh, exciting. It is good practice after a river crossing, as soon as your rear wheels are out of the river, to uh, stop for 5 to 10 seconds to let all the water drain, as you can carry up to 100 liters water off the track. Just driving up uh, Pluto Link track and Pluto track, and that's actually uh, yeah, pretty steep track couple of rutted sections in the wet it would be uh, quite a different ball game but uh, yeah again certainly a track uh, you don't fall asleep and nice little river crossing at the bottom not too deep but uh, very clean fresh cold water good for a little swim which we didn't do still a bit early but yeah definitely nice and steep track here Aberfeldy is a small little town uh, in Gippsland. The area was settled in 1871 after the discovery of gold. The Aberfeldy Cemetery is certainly worth a look. Uh, don't forget the gold coin donation. And cemeteries, especially these old cemeteries, always set me back in time. And uh, yeah, I ponder, you know, how, how people would have lived there at the time. Beautiful. How young some of them died. Robert, how, how cold is it? Okay. Yeah, Robert in his treasure trove of uh, Toyota 80 carried a thermometer, so we started measuring the water temperatures of the different mountain streams. No. Along the way we had a look at some more mining relics. In comparison to New South Wales, Victoria is so well organized and even the smallest little relict is marked with a historical marker. It's absolutely beautiful. We had a look at another secluded river campground uh, with a little bit interesting entry and exit. However, there was a lot of rubbish. It was very hot, uh, no grass, so we decided to drive to uh, O'Toole's uh, campground. O'Toole's campground is a pretty nice, very big open campground which actually had been helped to be rebuilt by the four-wheel drive community um, by the 4x4 Earth um, volunteers. So yeah, great job guys done there. Oh, Robert going for a swim. Where is he? Have fun! Mark is attending the fire and probably has something in the camp oven. Another beautiful morning, Tuesday morning. We just drove up Flats Track, which uh, goes up from O'Toole's campsite. And yeah, that name is a bit wrong. It's certainly not flat, it's actually pretty steep has some good rock uh, ruts in it and uh, yeah if you lift the front wheel on a 30 degree uh, steep um, up woods hill it's quite interesting good track good fun and the right warm-up track for the morning Yeah, that's actually a beautiful play terrain with Tiny. Um, love it. We gave that last little bit of miss and made our way down via the Williamson Trek down to the junction, which is a nice little junction where three rivers come together. And yeah, it was time for our first morning swim in the pretty fresh water. Our next stop was Thompson's Dam, which pretty much is a water supply for Melbourne. The dam was created in 1975. 
on Valhalla Road towards Woods Point, we saw a little sidetrack and on the map it indicated some old mining area. So we decided to give that one a go. Uh, it's called Violet Town um, Trek and pretty much goes down to Jericho and uh, Red Jacket and Blue Jacket. We stopped at the Red Jacket Old Cemetery and had a wander around and had a look at the old graves. So, ice cold river water, 15 degrees. Tip of the day, have 33 inch tyres. Right? No why? No. And now the clearances of your vehicles. Yeah. Otherwise, if you have 35 inch tyres, yes. you do damage like this. <laughs> and when you do damage like that, it's very inconvenient. Is it? But if you had 33 inch tyres, yes. you would have missed. So he told me. Robert, that Stop is... Stop laughing, Stefan. That, <laughs> that is the stupidest thing I've heard. <laughs> Comet Flat, beautiful old little log bridge. So we're here in beautiful Woods Point. Um, it's like traveling back in time somehow. I find that very picturesque. So after the stairs, Robert, you can have a rest. Yeah, lovely. River walk, absolutely picturesque. It is really like time travel. So we we camping here at Scott's, 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 Scott's flat, flat <laughs> out of Woods Point, and theoretically it's actually a very picturesque um, campground. The only problem is the road goes around there. And either it's knock off time, uh, yeah, it's not dusk or fog, it's dust. So, Robert is prepared. Very Stephen's well prepared. whinging about the dust, I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> I can't see what you're whinging about. Yeah, today will be an interesting day. We're going to start now on Sunday. Didn't do much research uh, about it, to be honest. Um, Darren from the Licola campground uh, told us that, yeah, it may take anywhere between one and three days, depending on how much you winch. So it will be interesting to see. Yeah, this is the Black River track and at this stage we didn't really know that our trip would end here. And that was me crossing the exit, uh, it's a little bit soft. With a solid axle vehicle, uh, correct tire pressure, mm -hmm. I didn't have any issues and uh, neither had rock. Before I get comments about too much wheel spin, uh, Mark's vehicle is a modern vehicle with traction control and no manual lockers. So any modern vehicle restriction control needs to be driven a very different uh, to an old uh, style vehicle with manual locks. For the traction control to work you actually need to drive through the slip and uh, let the traction control try to figure out what it needs to do. As you can see here that doesn't always work and if after two to three seconds you still don't get any forward momentum this is pretty much when you would go backwards and uh, look for a different line. That's exactly what Mark did. The rest of the track is pretty steep, has some very tight switchbacks in it, in addition to some rock steps and uh, ruts. I was in front, uh, Rob behind me and Mark last, and then we heard the message over the UHF no one really wants to hear. We just got over the UHF that Mark rolled his car on the back upside down. I don't know how. Uh, the car might be a bit damaged. Shit! <sighs> Mark. <laughs> you alright? 
Fortunately, Mark wasn't hurt. The airbags deployed as they should and protected uh, Mark very well while the car rolled. We also realized quickly that yeah. there was not much oh, chance for us to recover the vehicle there. No, I can't can't have been in there. The second one would be would be out there. Yes, yeah, 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 in angle. But you didn't start rolling here. I don't know, I lost traction, I was going backwards here. <sighs> I'm so glad you're okay. Look, could have been worse. All that can be yep. is insurance. Exactly. While we will never find out 100% uh, what caused the roll, we certainly know that a few small oversights contributed to the rollover. None of the mistakes would have caused any issues by themselves, but together in this particular situation, they had dramatic consequences. The first mistake uh, was that Mark switched off the hill descent control at the bottom of the hill. This may sound intuitive as we were ascending a hill, not descending, but it is important to know that on most modern Land Rovers, the hill descent control will work in reverse and even if the engine is stalled, the ignition must be on. This would have prevented the vehicle from rolling backwards uncontrolled and should always be left engaged on difficult ascents or descents. The second mistake was that Mark was slightly off his chosen line and instead of straddling the rut, he ended up with a passenger wheel in the rut. Trying to climb out of the rut on this steep hill, his automatic vehicle rolled a little backwards, which will stall the engine to protect the gearbox. Now the vehicle sat on this steep hill without running engine and no hill descent control being available in the background. To restart the vehicle it must be in park and the foot brake must be applied. Instead of a correct hill start procedure though, Mark went straight to park. The vehicle was actually still in park at the bottom of the hill. Until here we pretty much know exactly what happened, but everything after this now becomes a bit unclear. In Mark's recollection, he put the vehicle in park and still having his foot on the foot brake, it started rolling backwards. He tried to engage the electronic parking brake, but this works only on the rear wheels and is not designed to stop a moving vehicle. Regardless of that, when the vehicle is in park, the electronic park brake should be automatically applied. Caitlin and Rob recollect hearing a loud clicking noise, which we think was the parking pin not really clicking in. So I assume that the gearbox was under pressure and when Mark uh, went into park, it didn't actually go into park. And then for an unexplained reason, the vehicle really started rolling backwards. And once that vehicle is in movement without any engine braking, without the engine running, and more importantly, without the hill descent control sitting in the background, um, there was really no way to stop that vehicle from rolling backwards. As I was in front of uh, Rob and Mark and there was no way for me to turn around, Rob, Caitlin and Mark emptied uh, Mark's vehicle into Rob's vehicle and I went up the hill and tried to get telephone reception to organize the recovery. Hello. Hello. What can we do for you? Um, I have a small... Give me a bloke and skip that over on Black River track. That's it? Yeah, good am I. <laughs> <laughs> Mind reader. Oh, uh, no. Just no <laughs> deals when you see them. <laughs> <laughs> right up. I don't know when I'm going to get there, but it definitely isn't going to be today. Yep. So, Robert is managing to pack his eddy for two people and one female, that really is three. I shouldn't have said that. I like the flying and then still have space to pack all of Mark's stuff out of the Discovery. Nearly all. Some is on my roof, but a only a Jerry. Um, do you want to take the fridge out? Including Mark's fridge. Robert, come on, tell us your secret. Um, it's a Toyota Land Cruiser and it has heaps of room and I just pack light when I go to 
big trips. Mm. So, so only one set of undies, one set of socks. Yeah, you one get one swag, one. Twin. You get you get four days out of one pair of undies. Yeah, you reverse them or you reverse them reverse and turn them. them inside out. Good.